coming up on Urban Outsiders, I enter a Technicolor nightmare. Then get a beating from the California sun. I'm only worried when my host is laid up in bed and the designer cannot be here to answer questions. <laughs> only to get a shock when I recover. Living in the city can be hectic, noisy and stressful. Grey and often a little soulless, they're a concrete jungle. But it doesn't need to be that way. I'm the UK city gardener Matt James, and I'm on a mission to bring a bit of green tranquility into the lives of urban Americans. I'm in Echo Park, Los Angeles, to tackle a yard that's giving its owners oh, sleepless nights. It's an ugly, outdated, unloved nightmare. And I'm hoping that with a little bit of ingenuity, I can transform it into the garden of their dreams. California natives Rick and Steve are addicted to the fast-paced lifestyle of the City of Angels. After a long search, they have finally found a place they can call home in a hip and vibrant part of LA. I think what drew us both to this house was the neighborhood. So we have a really great mix of people around here. And we're really close to downtown. There's a lot happening down there. And there's a lot of old LA history here. And then the house itself was perfect for sort of our life because it was big enough that we could entertain. But also we have an office space and I work from home. And so it just worked perfectly. Their funky lifestyle is also reflected by their creative jobs. With Rick working as a freelance writer and Steve as a toy designer, they went about redecorating their home. Steve's really great with art and colors and that sort of thing, and he could handle the house. I sort of just wrote a check um, <laughs> to take care of that. Steve may be pretty hot on interiors, but outside, the yard is more like a psychedelic children's nightmare than a cool, fashionable adult hangout. It's pink stucco, so it looks sort of like icing on a cupcake. Mm -hmm. We have purple trim. And then the There's green wall. A green wall. It's really bad. And multicolored floor. <laughs> it's just, it's not our taste. Yeah, it's a little more than slightly embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this frightening scene, it's no wonder the guys are a little scared of making a start. But I hope to banish their fears and give their yard some of that LA magic. So this is your yard? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It's a bit of a kaleidoscope of colours. <laughs> well, we didn't paint it that way. I'm very glad you said that. No, it came that way when we got the house. Do you get a lot of use out of the yard? We use the laundry that's out here. Right. Yeah, we come down, do laundry, and go right back in the house. We'd like to really use it to entertain friends, barbecue, have people out here. Okay. Well, and, you know, take advantage of the California weather. Sure. I mean, that's why you have a, a yard like this, so that you can do something cool. Sure. Is there anything about the yard that you actually like? I like some of the grasses, the foxtails. That's kind of nice. And there's one hidden in there somewhere, but and that looks a little bit... Oh, the little alien, alien through there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little alien, fair enough. <laughs> We've always sort of thought of um, kind of a, a Mediterranean Spanish-y backyard, and I don't know if that fits that. Sure. With, mixed with the traditional, you know, like have terracotta tiles. You say Mediterranean, and you say tiles. Mm -hmm. And this would be the perfect floor to lay some tiling on. So it, virtually it's almost keeping an a real, real open centre so that you can get mm -hmm. as many people out here as you possi right. as possible. Yeah. Keeping the planting sort of centrifugal around the exterior to break up the, the linear nature of the walls. Mm -hmm. Is privacy a problem in the garden? It's huge. Right. Because, you know, we're on a hill so we can see into our neighbour's yard and then... Our neighbours can see into, into ours. ours. And if there's a way to cover up the laundry, you know, we love having it. It's one of our favourite features of the house sure. itself. So yeah. screening that off subtly. So there's a fair bit of screening in this garden to be done. Can you do it? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Is it, would you like me to say no? <laughs> I've got my work cut out if I'm to transform this garish horror of a backyard into the dream space Rick and Steve are after. Coming up, will the guys like what I've come up with? It's going to end up looking like a lot of terracotta tiles. And it's not just the gaudy colours in the backyard that are giving me a headache. I've come to Echo Park near downtown LA to lend my green fingers and help Rick and Steve with a reoccurring nightmare in their backyard. We have a, a small backyard that's 
perfect for entertaining. In theory, right now, not so much. It's pink stucco, so it looks sort of like icing on a cupcake. Mm -hmm. We have purple trim. And then the green wall. A green wall. It's really bad. I'm hoping to turn this psychedelic mess into a trendy Mediterranean space fit for Sunset Strip and somewhere for the boys to take time out from their busy schedules. Once we're done with work, we're done with work, and we want to be able to relax and chill out. I think living in Los Angeles, the Spanish architecture is really what both of us mm -hmm. are attracted to. You could pretty much do anything back there and it would look better, but... <laughs> yeah. You could throw a paint on the wall and it would look better. My design will offer much more than just a lick of paint on those nasty walls. I want to give Rick and Steve's yard a Spanish vibe with a contemporary twist. The terracotta tiles are classic med and will provide the large, entertaining space that the guys are after. I wonder, though, if this is just going to end up looking like a lot of terracotta tiles. But how is he dealing with the privacy? Because I was, in my head, I was thinking vines or something, but he doesn't have those here. By cladding the walls with red cedar battens and at the same time raising the height, I'll improve privacy and cover up that ugly block work. The planting will feature tall olives in pots and a bougainvillea will help tie the timber walls to the rest of the space and help avoid it looking like a giant sauna. It looks like he's built an extra room for our house, but outside. With the table here, mm -hmm. we're going to have plenty of room for entertaining friends, along with this lighting too, which is going to be great. Right. Hopefully it's going to be a little nicer than our Christmas lights. But before we can even think about having a party out here, it's time to get the team in the garden and clear this mess out. We're completely destroying the sound of silence. This fern is a little gem, and along with the Aeonium, or alien, that Steve was so keen to keep, we're actually saving some plants amongst all this destruction. Good stuff. OK, Matt? Yeah. OK, question. Um, so you liked the, the concrete that we had here. For the tiles, yeah. Right, but then you've got um, him jackhammering out over there? Only in a couple of places. Just, I can't hear myself think, <laughs> just on the end there, um, uh -huh. and, and here too. Because then what that does is it frames the table and chairs which sit in the middle of it. Oh, okay. okay. And as, as Leonardo's cracking it out there, it gives us more room for planting. But you can't have beds that are that wide. Right. <laughs> yeah, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> With the California sun beating down my neck, I'm glad to see our two local boys getting stuck in. But with only this tiny access to the garden, even they're having trouble with their back alley. And they're not the only ones having difficulty. Now, one thing you've got to consider with any dare sign <laughs> is access. So whatever you do, check the width of doorways and also alleyways like this to see if you can actually get things into the garden easily. Because if it's too big, you have no chance. Here you go, dudes. <clears throat> Your tiles have arrived. Tiles. <laughs> Handmade. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Lovely, aren't they? This shape in here, too, it's gonna, it's gonna keep the space from looking really dull and boring. And they cost a fortune, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. It's definitely, definitely worth it. I'm glad the boys like them, but there's 280 $6 tiles to get through that tight space. That's 35 trips and no shortcuts. My knuckles are now raw. <laughs> I now see bone. One. Last one. Yay. Let's walk up and down the alley a bit more, though. Okay. I've, still, I've still got some skin left. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the day coming to a close, the team are far from finished. The carpenter has arrived to start with the red cedar cladding, and the rest of the boys are building the extension to the planter. So the work in the garden is cracking on at breakneck speed. The terracotta tiles are being laid, and the sun is shining. Coming up, something puts a stop to my good fortune. I'm only worried when my host is laid up in bed and the designer cannot be here to answer questions. <laughs> and I get an almighty shock returning to the garden. Sheesh.
Looking for that ideal place to host family and friends? Discover the latest in kitchens at Snyder Diamond. Built-in appliances, striking sinks and faucets, custom countertops, distinctive personal solutions, and best buys on popular national brands like Sub-Zero, Viking, and DuPont Corian, all backed with in-depth knowledge and personal attention. For more than 50 years, Snyder Diamond, your neighborhood resource for kitchen and bath. In Southern California, Adelphia and Comcast have been replaced by Time Warner Cable. It'll be that easy. In Southern California, Adelphia and Comcast have been replaced by Time Warner Cable. It'll be that easy. I've come to the City of Angels to help turn Rick and Steve's far from angelic backyard into a Mediterranean hideaway. You know, if we finally got the backyard fixed up, I think it would finally make our place into feeling like a home. Along with a beautiful new sunny day, the work at the yard is relentless. The wall for the planters has been finished, the terracotta tiles are going down, and now the boys are banishing the last evidence of that ugly kaleidoscopic mess of colour. Just as we're on a roll, it's come out of the blue, but that wonderful California sun has hit me where it hurts. My body, I suppose, is accustomed to London rain, and now I've been banished to my hotel room with a severe case of sunstroke. Whilst I'm out for the count, would you believe it, it started to rain. Lady Luck is not on my side. I might as well be back in London. What's happening today? Well, Matt was not used to the California weather and he got sunstroke yesterday, so he's not here, which is only ironic because it's raining. I'm only worried when my host is laid up in bed and the designer cannot be here to answer questions because we look at the crew and we go, is this supposed to happen? And everybody smiles and nods, but nobody answers. So that's a little bit nerve wracking. I'm not worried. It's getting, it's getting done. It's going to look amazing. The fact that, you know, it's pouring rain and these guys are still able to lay tile, that gives me hope that no matter what the weather ends up being, we're going to be able to get this thing done. So yeah, we have faith. Well, at least someone still believes in me, but this Californian weather's all over the place. One minute sun, next rain, and with a new day, we're back to blazing sunshine. Now that the carpenter's back, he's really nailing those cedar battens, and having worked through the rain, Luis is one happy mason. He's peppered the patio with blue hand-painted tiles. I chose these to help break up the terracotta monotony and add a classic Mediterranean twist to this contemporary yard. This looks amazing. <laughs> and did you notice the, the blue tiles? It cools the space down. Right. It's really great. It's awesome. And did you see the walls? It looks so great. It looks so much better than it did. <laughs> when I don't have the brains God gave a goat when it comes to planting. So Hopefully Matt will be feeling better and we can get him here because we're going to need some serious help with these plants. Yeah. But Rick and Steve needn't worry. After a few days shaded rest, I'm back on the job and I'm going to return with a little bit of Spain. Whether you live in a tiny city basement or all you have is a small balcony to play with, gardening in pots is a great and cheap way of adding colour and interest to any space. Having splashed the dollars on that marvellous redwood and those beautiful tiles, I've got to watch the budget when it comes to the containers, but I still want something with a true Spanish feel. And of course, what better for a Mediterranean-style garden than terracotta? Terracotta pots are excellent when it comes to drainage. The poorest quality of the clay means less chance of root disease. However, in a hot climate like California, it does mean more frequent watering is needed. But, as our olive trees are drought tolerant, these pots will make the perfect partner. I need something pretty substantial to accommodate my olive trees. And these, they foot the bill. They're clean, they're simple, they're not too cheesy. And they suit the budget as well, at $62.99 each. <laughs> it now means that I can have more than one plant in the garden. 
mission accomplished. But now the nerves have stepped in. Tomorrow, I get to see how the boys have coped without me. Just feel with trepidation walking to the house now. I really am just very nervous about what I'm going to find. I mean, it's my little baby, and I, I'm just frightened that, you know, they've, they've kind of mucked it up. I mean, I've, I've got some shade now with my cap, and I'm ready to start planting, but I hope, I just hope the build has gone well. I really do, and I hope it looks, looks the bee's knees. Um, just can't wait to see it. Wow, look at that, looks so much bigger, it looks enormous, Just, the tiles look gorgeous and the cladding works a treat, thank goodness you know, thank goodness. If this yard is any evidence then I think I may have to take more time off in the future. No chance of that now, though. All the plants are out front, and it's time to start the fun stuff. Here's your lovely plants, chaps. This is fantastic. Olives. Oh, my goodness. They're beautiful. And we've got a lovely bourgeonvillea there, because I know you wanted one of those. Right. And a real deep purple colour. And then we'll train that along the back, mm -hmm. and then you can clip it into whatever shape you like. I've never had so many plants I was already completely terrified of killing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. Fair few to get in. Right. Yeah. So Through the let's little go. alley. Through the little alley. <laughs> This time, I'm taking no chances. The natives can work away in the sun, whilst I'm doing very important gardener stuff. The yard has started to come alive with all this planting, and we should have it finished tomorrow. But coming up, has the heat got to me again? I'm sweating like a... And how is the 10-foot screen going to get through that little alley? So I'm, I'm very disappointed. I'm near downtown Los Angeles, where the transformation of Rick and Steve's psychedelic nightmare of a backyard is almost over. But before the guys can throw a party in here for their friends, there's a lot to do. I'm sweating like a... Ugh. I was going to say something really bad. Can you turn the pot around? Happy there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can come and help me plant, if you like. We could. We probably should have them. <laughs> OK. The planting scheme for this garden is relatively simple. I'm using junipers, ceanothus and box balls, amongst others, to break up the red cedar wall. And these magnificent olive trees will not only create wonderful interest, but will also help tie in the whole design. This gardening business is hard work, and I'm not making the same mistake twice. Need a lot of this today. Didn't have enough on day one, that's the problem. Finally, it's time to get those wonderful terracotta pots in here. But they're a bit heavy. I think I'll let the boys do it. It's the olive trees that really set this garden alive. With four on the back wall, one by the house and one by the alleyway, these slow-growing evergreens are perfect for a small yard. And their beautiful flowers will really stand out against this cedar wall. Now that the guys have flexed their muscles, there's an even bigger job to contend with. The 10-foot high timber screen won't fit through the alley, so it's time to go over the top. Awesome. Now that is cool. Ah, finally. As well as the new plants, I've also managed to use some of Rick and Steve's old favourites, such as this Aeonium and these lovely ice plants. They're both great as their colour and architectural form really fit in well with the modern Mediterranean theme. Now that the planting is almost done, there are just a few finishing touches and this haven is just a couple of balls from finished. Now, these things are very, very popular in the States, not much not so much in the UK, and they're a gazing bore. But here, I thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of garden whimsy. And I'm arranging them like this, just so that they provide a little bit of interest and um, something to catch the eye and raise a smile. It's hard to imagine, but a little less than a week ago, Rick and Steve's courtyard resembled a children's nightmare. 
The colours were more hippie haven than LA chic, and even the guys were afraid to go out there. Now, they have a cool, laid-back Mediterranean lounge where they can both kick back or entertain their friends in this trendy space fit for two young artists. At a cost of $3,000, wooden cladding wasn't cheap, but for me, it's worth every last cent. It's provided the privacy the guys wanted, and the long strips of that beautiful cedar give the yard a modern element that combines wonderfully with the hexagonal terracotta paving. And if you think it looks good in daytime, watch it come alive in the LA night. So then, guys, do you like what we've done? It's crazy. It's it absolutely unbelievable. I don't even remember what it used to look like. Because you want, very much wanted a mix of modern and a little bit of Mediterranean, kind of Spanish y, sort mm -hmm. of Californian feel. Is it? It's enough of a mixture for you guys? It's perfect. You know, it's got those classic elements, you know, the whites and the plants and stuff, but then it's got these modern twists, like beyond this genius sort of way of dealing with our wonky wall. Yes. But, yeah. like, like, we love your balls. Like, that... <laughs> I, love, I, I love those too. <laughs> I have to say, I think the olive trees really hit it for me because especially when they grow out, they're going to do the privacy, they're going to sort of be this great hedge. And I love even more that these are non-fruit bearing okay. olive trees. Because mm -hmm. mama don't want to clean it up, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Fair uh, enough. No. Fair enough. No. <laughs> do you have a favorite bit? The masking of the laundry area has to be the, the most incredible thing. Because that was very yeah. important to you, wasn't it? It's like it brought everything sort of together and elevated it to a level that we couldn't have anticipated or thought of our, on our own. Sure. It just goes to show how oppressive those colours were. Yeah. And I don't understand how you live with them for so long. <laughs> I don't either. I, uh, you've definitely shown us uh, the way of the world, I guess. This yard has been a serious challenge. I mean, it's tested my creativity and pushed my body to the limit. But what a difference a week makes. I arrived at a psychedelic hallucination but after torrential rain and blistering sun, I'm now leaving Rick and Steve with a, with a modern med haven. And I am thrilled that they love it just as much as I do.